Hello, hello. How everybody doing? Y'all speak to me when you come on. Y'all speak to me. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody coming on. How y'all doing? Hey, Barbara, how you doing? Hey, Barbara, how you doing? Uh, I'm with y'all. I'm just trying to see what this YouTube thing doing. It keeps saying it's going live. Hello, everyone. Everyone, hello, hello, hello. Everybody doing okay? We're going to get started. Uh, again, I'm trying to figure out what this... Uh, YouTube is doing, but we're going to go ahead. And maybe, you know, I don't know. It'll click on or do something. Because it's taking me to a whole other screen than what I had before. Uh, pray everyone's doing well. Pray everyone is good. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, stop the screen. Oh. It's going to take me to a whole nother screen. A whole nother something. Y'all, that with me. They knocked the camera down. Uh. But we're gonna go ahead and start. And maybe the YouTube, uh, I get to work and I'm starting to thank YouTube don't like uh, me and our lives. Father, we thank you now for this day, for all that you've done. We thank you for life, health and strength. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for your love and kindness. God, we thank you for being so good, kind and merciful unto us. Now, God, we pray that you will be in our midst as we go into this Bible study tonight. God, open up our hearts, our minds, and our ears that we may hear you and be receptive of thy word. God, have your way in the lives of thy people. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus we pray. We thank you and we give you praise. Amen. All right, y'all. We're getting in the word. Again, I pray you all have been well. Um, those are that are members of GVBC, uh, y'all know we've been having virtual spirit week this week, and today is where your church shirt day. So make sure you post those church shirt pictures or just a selfie. Even if you don't have on a church shirt, post it and hashtag it Team GVBC. We've been having some fun with that this week. Um, I want to share something with you tonight in the book of Isaiah. Get your Bibles. This is Bible study, whether it's in your living room, bedroom, or wherever. Isaiah chapter number 43. Isaiah chapter number 43, uh, I want to read a couple verses and then we will get rolling. I just want to share some things with you that you know, the Lord has placed in my heart and in my spirit. Uh, Isaiah 43, verse 18, King James says, 
Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me and the dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 21. We want to deal with it. And I want to kind of talk um, from this thought tonight um, after this, after this. And I believe a lot of us are wondering in this moment, um, what's going, what's going to happen after this? What is the, what, what's happening after this? What is the next move? What is the next thing that is getting ready to happen? What is going to happen next? We, we, we're wondering that because we are in a place in life now um, where we're dealing with some things and dealing with a circumstance that we've never dealt with before. So the question is, God, what, what's coming after this? Because we understand and we know that there is a purpose. Uh, uh oh, sorry about that. I shouldn't have tried to move that. My bad. Uh, we know that there's a purpose for this and that there's a purpose um, behind everything that is going on and happening. But, God, we just really need to know what's next because we're curious of knowing what is next. OK, and so uh, we want to talk about that tonight. And you got to understand that even in this moment uh, of whatever your this is and this this pandemic that we're get, dealing with, um, some of us have think that God has stopped moving in our midst. Some people have stopped thinking that God uh, have started thinking that God has forgotten about them. But I want to reassure you tonight that God has not forgotten and God has not stopped working. He's still working in the midst um, for he is a God that's in control of everything. And you got to understand that even when we get through this, that God has to do has to still be God because he's still God. He can't change. Amen. And so you got to understand that God is trying to get our attention. God's trying to get us to, to be able to focus in on him so that we can be prepared for whatever it is that God's going to do after this. Hear me. This is a moment of positioning and purpose. Hello. I've been saying it for the last couple of days. This is a moment of positioning and purpose because God is trying to get us prepared for the next thing or the next place that he has to get us. And so in this moment, you shouldn't waste time worrying. You shouldn't waste time uh, just wasting time. But you got to get in that place where you can hear, get your ear where you can hear God so that you can get in the right position and in the right place of purpose. So that you can move forth and be everything that God would have you to be. And understand, brothers and sisters, you got to know that God is up to something. There is great purpose. Y'all hear me. There is great purpose in everything that we go through. The good, the bad, there's great purpose in there. That's why he told us in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and to those that are called according to his purpose. He said that because guess what? There's great purpose in the midst of this. Amen. And so you got to get to that place. So we're asking the question tonight, what is it? What, what's coming after this? And understand that in this moment and in this season, God is preparing us for the new thing. What is the new thing? He's taking us out of the box. He's restoring his, his presence and his glory back into the earth and back into the church. But in order to do that, he had to take away everything that we were going through. I mean, everything that we will have before him so that we could get to this place to be able to hear him to receive the next amen the next thing that god is getting ready to do is going to be something new and it's going to be able to blow our minds hear me tonight don't take this moment and this opportunity in your life uh, to just, you know, for granted, but take it and say, God, I thank you, because that means that something new is getting ready to come. Something old has to go away so that guess what? You can be able to uh, to go and see what God would have you to uh, see and where he would have you to go. Understand this, my brothers and sisters, you got to be able to see what God is doing and what you need to know and how he's doing it. You got to be able to know. You got to be able to see. You got to be able to trust that God is up to something and you got to follow exactly what God is saying. You'll never be able, watch this, you'll never be able to accept the new thing that God is trying to do until you first get the old thing out of the way. Hello. You got to get the old thing out of the way. You got to get the past out of the way. You got to get the past issues. You got to get the past hurt. You got to get the past pain. You got to get all that stuff out of the way so that God can be able to prepare you and position you for the new thing. Because watch this, you can't walk in the new thing if you're still walking in the old thing. I'm going to say that again. 
You cannot walk in the new thing unless you're until you've gotten rid of the old thing. You got to start walking it. He's very clear to us in verse 18. He says to us, Isaiah 43, verse 18. He says, remember ye not the former things, the old thing, the past, the thing that was before. He says, and neither consider the things of old. He says, listen, don't even worry about this stuff because guess what? You conquered that. You've made it through. And guess what? You are who you are because of what you went through. Good God Almighty. You are who you are because of what you went through. David testifies well of that. He says, and it was good for me that I was afflicted. Hear me. You thought that everything you went through was there to destroy you and hurt you, but hear me tonight. It was good for you. It was good because you grew up, you mature, you begin to think the way God would have you to think. And guess what? You're wiser, you're better, you're stronger now because of what you went through. So guess what? Going through whatever your this is, is necessary to position you. Hear me what I'm saying. To position you for the next thing in the next place that God will have you to go to. Amen. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to get to that place and he wants you to understand my brothers and sisters that he's trying to take us to a new level and a new thing you'll never be able to get something new if you never get rid of the old i'm gonna say that again i'm gonna keep saying it tonight you'll never be able to get something new until you learn how to get rid of that that which was old so god's trying to get us that he's very clear he's telling us don't live in the past and see watch this people will try to keep you in your past but sometimes you try to keep yourself in the past because you hold yourself uh you you know you you feel guilty you you feel it but you got to let go of all of that stuff and allow god to be able to grow you and mature you honey we know you messed up you did it but now that you've repented and you've uh, called on the name of the lord and he's forgiven you and he's uh freed you from that ain't no need of you still holding on to that hello somebody some of y'all some of us can't get better because we're always hanging on to that what was messed up hear me the hurt the pain you got to let that stuff go it happened get over it you got to move past that and i know that seems harsh but you got to get past it because god is a god that will heal your heart your mind your spirit and your soul he has great purpose for you in the earth he has great uh destiny for you to fulfill but you gotta make sure brothers and sisters that you forget about the stuff of the past and move forward Forward. And guess what? Can I help us tonight? Some of the things that you went through in your past is what qualifies you to be anointed and have purpose right now. I said some of the things that you went through and dealt with in your past is what qualifies you to be anointed for purpose and positioning in this moment and in this hour. Y'all hear me? You, you went through what you went through, but God didn't bring you through just to bring you through. He took you through what you went through. He allowed you to go through it and he brought you through because he had great purpose for you. There's a greater testimony for you. You hear what I'm saying? You got to share your testimony. You got to tell who God is and what he's capable and able of doing. Hear me? God didn't save you and deliver you out of what you were going through for you to sit down and be quiet he sat that he did that so that you could get up that you would testify that you would praise him that you would give him the glory and the honor because he mean we are the salt of the earth we are the example in the earth god wants us to be that but guess what god wants us to get to that place where we totally trust and depend on him and that we're going to take him at his word well what does his word say his word says and it's very clear he says i know the thoughts that i think toward you their thoughts of good and not of evil and to give you an expected end. Hmm. What does that mean? God is saying to us, I ain't trying to destroy you. I'm trying to help you get to the place of purpose. Uh oh. He ain't trying to destroy you. There's an expected end that he has for us. He's already mapped it out. Hear me. Before we were even thought about when, he, when, when we were just a spirit in the heavenly realms. God had already mapped this thing out before you were placed in your mother's womb. He already knew what he wanted you to do from the beginning. He already knew what you were going to go through from the beginning. He already knew what he was going to deliver you out of from the beginning. He already knew this because guess what? He says, I got an expected end for you to get to. But hear this. You can run. I'm going to say this. I want you to catch it. You can run to get to the finish line and you may get there a whole lot quicker. But sometimes you got to go through the valley. Sometimes you got to go through the ups, the downs, the bumps in the road. But guess what? You'll still get to the end. Good God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It don't. Listen, you trying to get there too quick. Pump your brakes and let God get you there when he wants to get you there. Amen. But you got to let go of the baggage and let go of some stuff in order to get to the place where God wants you to get to. And here it is. You can't keep doing. You can't say you're walking with God and in the will of God and still participating and doing the things that you were doing in the in your worldly life. You can't bring that stuff from the worldly life over into the new life and think that God is going to be able to do something new with you if you're still holding on to some stuff you shouldn't hold on to. Hello. 
You got to get some stuff out of you. And hear me, that goes beyond that of material things. You got some stuff on the inside that you, you got some heart issues and some soul issues that you need to get rid of. And you got to take advantage of this moment and get rid of it so that God can position you for the thing that he wants you to have. And the reality is right now and even times, even past right now, that we uh, in the past we saw and we could not see the new things that God was doing because we were trying to live in the good old days. See, we can't see what God trying to do. We trying to live in the past of what it was always like then and what it was then and all that stuff. But see, you got to live in the place of now. Amen. God wants you to live in the place of now. He wants you to be able to see and hear what he's doing now. Yes, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. But God is doing something now that you got to grab hold of. Yes, he was a healer then, but he's still a healer now. But guess what? He's doing more than just healing now. He's still delivering now. He's still saving now. He's still making a way out of no way now. He's still a bridge over troubled water now. He's still a very present help in the time of trouble now. He's still the peace that surpasses all understanding. Standing now, he's trying to pull you out of a dark place into the place of his light. He's trying to do that stuff now. You ain't got to wait uh, and, and, and say, well, he did it then. But guess what? He did do it then. But God wants to do some stuff for you now. And you got to stop living in the blinded days of your past. Amen. It's okay. Um, to remember every now and then, but hear me, you can't go back there and camp out and live there because what has happened is a lot of us can't focus and see what God's doing now because we too busy still living back there. You done got in the, you done got back in the bed. Hello. You done got back in the bed and you done got comfortable and you're camping out there. No, God don't want you to be comfortable. God wants you to keep moving. He wants you to be a people of progression. He wants you to be a people of purpose. You can't get nothing done if you at a standstill and comfortable. God don't want you to get comfortable there, God, because guess what? God wants you to forever be moving because he's a forever moving and progressing God. Amen. Because he, I, I believe that if I took the moment right now to ask some of y'all what's that happened uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, you'd be able to tell me everything that happened then, but you would not be able to tell me what God is doing now because you're still focused on that and you're remembering that there. But he tells us very clearly that guess what? If you're going to understand what's going to happen after this, you got to know that I'm trying to do a new thing because watch this. I'm going to help us right here. All of us on this quarantine thing are uncomfortable. All of us don't want to do it. All of us have an issue with it. All of us have some type of a thought about it, but the reality is it is good for us, but even in the midst of this, you got to say, God, what, what is it you're trying to show me? What is it that you're trying to show me that you're getting ready to do that's new? Because guess what? Even in this moment, God is pushing us out of the box to trust him. He's pushing us out of the box to do some things that we've never done before. Amen. He's causing us to do it as individuals. He's calling us to do it as a corporate body in the kingdom. And he's causing you to even have to do that in your homes and on your job. He wants you to go there. But you got to know that God is doing something new every day and every moment because you got to know that God is doing it. And that he's moving on your behalf. Every day he wakes you up. He's giving you new breath. Every day that you wake up, his mercies and his compassions are renewed unto you daily. Every day that you wake up, he's speaking new life and pouring out a fresh anointing and a fresh wind of his power into your life. Hear me, God ain't waking you up just to wake you up. He ain't doing it because he ain't got nothing else to do. He's doing it because he's trying to get us to that place of purpose and positioning. I'm going to keep saying it. God wants us to understand that. God wants us to understand that he's trying to do something new. He's trying to show us and do something that he's never done before. Hear me and hear me well. God's trying to pour, pour back his glory in there. And see, folk can get what they want to get and they can say what they want to say. But, you know, I've been talking to God because I've been asking God about where we are in the kingdom and where we are in this moment in life. And I'm like, God, I, I've been watching <clears throat> The different. That's right. We can't get comfortable. We got the progress. We got to keep going forward. But I ask God, God, I know I see because I'm 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 I'm, I'm tuning in to other pastors. They're preaching and they're teaching, and it's a blessing. But hear me, I'm seeing pastors who I've watched for years and I've been around for years. I'm seeing God shift them and take them to another place. But hear this: God had to empty the church in order to be able to shift us to take us to the next place. Man, y'all missed that there. God had to shift us from the distraction. He had to move out problems and people out of the way so that we could hear and see and move in a new direction. Y'all come close. I ain't just talking about the pastors in the church. I'm talking to you right now. God had to get you out from around everything and everybody and put you in a place of solitary confinement so that he could speak to you, so that he could show you that I'm trying to do a new thing. He's cultivating your anointing and your gifting even right now while you're sitting listening to this live. He's positioning you. He's getting you ready. Hear me and hear me well. He's taking out all 
all the stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's taking out all of the stuff because he's getting ready to do a new thing inside of us. He's trying to empty us out so that when we come out of quarantine, that not only will we be better as a corporate body, but he wants us to be better as individuals. Hit me. When you come, you ought to be, you ought to take so much advantage of this quarantine time and this solitary time that when you come out, you have nothing but oil. You have nothing but the anointing flowing on your life. You, you hear what I'm saying? That when people walk by you, they're going to jump because they're going to feel God's presence and his anointing. He wants to do a new thing, y'all. He wants to do some things that we've never seen done before. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He wants us to teach in a way we've never taught. He wants us to preach in a way we've never preached. He wants us to pray in a way we've never prayed. He wants us to sing in a way we've never seen a song. Excuse me. He wants us to play our instruments in a way we've never played them. He wants us to usher at the door in a way we've never ushered. He wants us to be leaders in the body of Christ in a way we've never led before. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me tonight, but I want you to get it. It's good because I want you to soak it in like a sponge. God wants us to do something. He wants you to be a better husband. He wants you to be a better wife. He wants you to have uh, be a better parent. He's trying to do something in you that you ain't never had before. Because we're so used to doing it our way and handling it our way. But God says, no, this is a time of positioning. This is a time of purpose because I want to do a new thing in you. Can I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that revival is coming to the church? Revival is coming to the land. Man, I feel that strong. Hear me. God is sending revival. And hear me. Revival ain't to make us, uh, it's not to make us come together and shout. But revival is to refresh us. Revival is to replenish us. Revival is to re-strengthen us. Hear me tonight. God's sending revival to your home even now. Because God wants to replenish, he wants to refresh and re-strengthen. He wants to give the strength back to that what has failed. He wants to bring the church back to a place of life and healthiness. He wants to bring us back to a place of ministry where lives have changed, y'all. God is sending revival. He's talking to us. He wants us to get back to that place of where we totally depend on him and to the place where we totally trust him and lean on him. Y'all, revival is coming. There's a wind of refreshing coming. Y'all hear me? There's a restrengthening coming to the body and in the land. But you got to get to that place where you got an in here. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. Don't miss revival. Because see, revival didn't break out in the crowds. Revival broke out in homes where there was a, a small group of people. Y'all ain't hearing me. Revival is going to break out amongst us. Amen. But we got And the revival is going to start with you. Huh? Revive us again. That's what we want God to do. And that's what your cry got to be. God, revive me again. You know what revive means? To bring back. Woo! Glory to God. It means to bring back. I'm sorry. I just got excited. I felt something in the Holy Ghost right there. Revive means to bring us back. God wants to bring you back. They want, God wants to reset. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He wants to, res he wants to resuscitate us. Because somewhere. Woo, hallelujah. Somewhere we died. And we've lost it. And now we're stuck in this place. God, what happens next? God says, I'm getting ready to revive you. I'm getting ready to put the light back in you. He's getting ready to say, mm, clear, boom. And he's going to bring it back to us. He wants to do that to us. And he wants them when he does it, he wants to give us a new life. Whew, glory. He wants us to breathe again, but he wants us to get to that place where we walk in a place of newness. Huh? Okay. Thank you, Jackie Brown. You just helped me right there. She said, reset us. What does that mean? God says, I want to reset. You know, when you reset your phone, it clears out all the stuff that was causing your phone to malfunction. And now your phone works perfectly. That's what God wants to do. He wants to clear out all the malfunction so that we can operate in the place of purpose and positioning that he would have us to be in. Do you hear me? He wants to get all the clutter out. But watch this. You got to help him do that. You got to be willing to give up that what you don't want to give up so that he can get you in that place of positioning. I don't know about y'all, but I feel better already. And I also know that guess what? When I come out of this, I'm going to be better and I'm going to stay better because guess what? I understand that this is a time of purpose and positioning. OK, I got to get back into this because I got to try to finish this. But you got to get that in your spirit that God's trying to revive us. He's trying to reset us. He's trying to get us back to that place. Amen. He's trying to put life back in us so that we can live. God has given us another opportunity to get this thing together. And to get this thing right. But hear me tonight, saints of God. Hear me, children of God. That God wants to make sure that we are in a place to receive the new thing. Because when we receive the new thing, the new thing ain't for us to keep. It's for us to give it back out. Mm-hmm. 
God wants to do that. He wants to give it back. He wants us to give it back out. Hear me and hear me well tonight. Hear me. God wants to do a work in us like never before. I know you want to die. I know you want to quit. I know you want to give up. Nope. But God's getting ready to revive us. He's getting ready to reset, uh, resuscitate us. He's getting ready to reset us so that we can function and operate in the place that he would have us to be. Okay. All right. Y'all got to understand that God is getting ready to send revival. How do we know that? Because verse 19 and 20 helps us understand. This. He says, behold, I will do a new thing and now it shall spring forth. Not that it will, not that it might. But God says, guess what? I'm going to do a new thing and it shall spring forth. When something springs, it what? It pops. It moves. I'm sorry. Y'all know I, I'm ADHD sometimes. Um, but anyway, but it pops. It springs. It comes up and it comes forth with power and force. It comes out of there. And he says, and guess what? And shall ye not know it? He says, I will even make a way in the wilderness and in rivers in the desert. So what God saying is to us is that guess what? I'm going to make everything that was impossible possible. That's what God says to us. He says if I can get you in a place where I can reset you, the new thing that I do will be the very thing that everybody thought that I couldn't do. Y'all missed that. I need you to catch it. Come closer. God says to us, he says, I'm going to do a new thing. It's going to spring forth. He says, and you go, he said, and you go, he says, shall you not know it? You going to know when it's something new. He said, because guess what? After that, he says, I will even make a way in the wilderness. Some of y'all in the wilderness right now. And I will uh, make rivers in the desert. So some of y'all in a dry place right now. But God says, I'm getting ready to cause rivers. Rivers represents water. Water represents life. Water re represents refreshing. God says, I'm fit. Glory to God. I feel God in here tonight. He says, I'm going to send a fresh water. I'm getting ready to send rivers of water in a dry place. Mm-hmm. You're in a dry place. Finance is in a dry place. Marriage in a dry place. Family in a dry place. Health is in a dry place. But God says, I'm finna send rivers in the dry place. Some of y'all in the wilderness, you out there in the midst of, you just out there and you all over. But God says, I'm getting ready to send life. I'm getting ready to make a way out there for you. Hear me. He says, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. I'm going to provide for you in the wilderness. Because see, even right now, some of you that have been forelowed or, or temporarily uh, uh, disconnected out of a job. I say temporarily because I believe God's going to open up a door and put you back in employment. Hello, somebody. You got to have faith to believe it. And I'm believing for you even if you ain't believing. But anyway. He says, right now you feel like you're in the wilderness, but guess what? God's going to make a way. He's going to make sure there's food on the table. He's going to make sure that the, pay, the bills are paid. He's going to make sure you be able to get from A to B. Somebody got to catch that in here tonight. He says that there's going to be, I'm going to make a way in it. I'm going to do 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 it. He says, I'm going to make a way. He didn't say, I'm going to think about it. He didn't say, I'm gonna, I might do it. But he says, I will make a way in the wilderness. He says, I'll even do it. So when he says, I will even make a way, he said, look here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a new thing, but I'm also going to do this. Woo! I feel like running. He says, guess what? I'm going to send a new thing, but even while I'm sending a new thing, I'm going to make a way where it look bad. I'm going to make a way in the dry place and in the wilderness for you. I'm going to do for you what you can't do for yourself. I'm going to do for you what everybody else done gave up on and said can't be done. Hello, hello, hello. God says, I'm getting ready to do that in the reset. And in the reset, I'm going to take your faith to another level and I'm going to take your trust to another level. Y'all got to catch this tonight. After this, after I get what happens, after this, I'm going to be in a new place. That's going to be a new thing being done to me. My faith is going to be something new. Y'all catch this tonight. Huh? After this, you want to know what's going to happen after this. After this, you should be in a new place. Hmm? You should appreciate going to work after this. You should appreciate family quality time after this. You should appreciate coming to the place of worship after this. You should appreciate God through your praise and through your worship after this. Hear me. Hear me well. Hear me well. Don't go through all this and don't go through this moment and this time and still come out being the same stubborn you. After this. There's got to be something new. There's got to be a reviving of something. Because some things have died. And I've been saying this since Sunday. As I heard the Lord clear as day, you got to learn how to fight from another place. And in that place of fighting, because hear me, if you want to live, you got to fight to live. Woo! I said, you got to fight to live. Huh? You can't just be there and thank God got to do it. No, you got to fight. You got to let God know. I want, I want this purpose. I want this place of position. I want the new thing. You got to know, brothers and sisters. 
And you got to fight for it. And while you're fighting, God's going to do his part. He says, look at here. He says that I'm going to make a river come in the desert. And watch this. Anybody know anything about a desert? It's made of sand. It's made of sand. It's made of sand. But God says, I'm going to send rivers of water in the desert. Y'all come closer. God's going to perform a miracle in your dry place. Woo! He ain't going to wait. Huh? He said he ain't going to wait till you come out, but he's going to send the miracle and the breakthrough and the change and the turnaround in the place you're in now. Come closer. You need some scripture uh, testimonies, don't you? Paul and Silas were in jail. He did not send the miracle after they got out. He sent the miracle of freeing them while they were in there. Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't wait till Daniel came out, but he delivered Daniel in it. The three Hebrew boys, while they were in the fiery furnace, he didn't wait till they came out. He delivered them in the fire. Because if you read the text and read the text well, it says when they went in, they was bound. But when they came out, they were loose. How did they get loose? Because he delivered them inside of that. Y'all got to catch that. He's not going to wait till you come out and come through. He's going to deliver you in it so that when you come out, you're not going to still be in in the thing that you were in when you went in it. Oh, man, glory to God. God's going to bring you out of it. And when you come out of it, he's going to get the glory. He's going to get the praise. Hear me and hear me well. When God brings you out, you're going to know he's going to get the glory. Can I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that when God brings us through this COVID-19, it's not going to be because what President Donald Trump said. It's not going to be what, from what that doctor can't think of his name, what he said. It ain't going to be because of what somebody else came up with or no scientist. It's going to be because the hand of God came in and moved. And can I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that God is already moving because if you listen to the news well and not pay attention to all the negative, you will catch that New York City has been releasing more people overcoming it than they have of, re of releasing dead bodies. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. More people are surviving, more people are living. Even right here in Greenville, there are people that have survived it and overcame it. Why? Because God is in control. He's a miracle worker. And God says, guess what? I'm doing it and they still don't have a cure for it. Woo! Because guess what? At the end of the day, God is the miracle worker. And he's the one that's going to get the glory out of this. You ought to touch yourself. Don't touch nobody else. We're practicing social distancing. Touch yourself and say, self, he's going to do it while I'm in the midst of it. He's not going to wait till I come out. But he's going to deliver. He's going to send a breakthrough. He's going to send a miracle. He's going to save. He's going to heal while I'm in the midst of it. He's going to make a way for me while I'm in the midst of it. He's going to take care of me while I'm in the midst of it. He's going to cover me. Hallelujah. While I'm in the midst of it. That's what kind of God we said. That's why you can understand even the clearer now what he said in, in, in uh, what's that? Psalms 46. He says, for God is a very present help in the time of trouble. You can understand it better now because he says, guess what? I'm going to be a very present help, which means I'm going to help you while you're in it. Woo. I ain't going to just help you when you're out of it, but I'm going to help you while you're in it. Saints of God, hear me. Your help comes from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. That's where your help comes from. And you got to know that and you got to know that he's there with you and he's going through this thing with you. And hear me, brothers and sisters tonight, you may be in a desert, you may be in a wilderness place, but hear me tonight, hear the word of the Lord tonight, hear me saints of God, children of God, hear me, fear not, hear me, don't fear. Because God's going to make a way for you. Don't even panic. Don't trip. Don't flip out. Hang in there. God's going to make a way for you. I know you can't see it now. I know you don't believe it now. But hear me tonight. I'm convinced and I believe that God is going to make a way. Because all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and those that are called according to his purpose. Hear me and hear me well. That if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? And guess what? In all these things, you got to know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You got to know that you can beat this. You got to know. That you can overcome this You got to know That you got a power On the inside of you That will stomp the devil down Hear me and hear me well tonight You are more than a conqueror And hear me I don't care what happens I don't care what comes The Bible is clear Nothing shall be able To separate us from the love of God After this What's coming after this There's a new thing coming after this There's a way gonna be made after this 
There's miracle signs and wonders coming after this. There's a new power. There's a new glory coming out. You're going to be better than what you were before. Hear me. Get through whatever your this is. Good God Almighty. Don't stop in the middle of this, but keep pushing. I know what the doctors have said. I know they've given up and they made you lose all hope. But baby, shake yourself together. Lift your head up and understand that God's getting ready to do a new thing. Your body had to be afflicted. You had to go through what you were going through. You want to know why you had to go through it so that God can prepare you for the new thing. Hear me tonight. God's trying to take us there after this. He says that he says, behold, I, I, I will do a new thing and uh, it shall spring forth and ye shall know. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. He said, and now it shall spring forth. It's going to happen tonight. It's going to happen for you. It's going to happen before you get out of it. He says, and I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. I'm going to wake a way in the desert. Can I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that God will give you a road of recovery and a river of streams in the midst of what you're going through because he promised us the new thing. Good God Almighty. I said he promised us a new thing Because see guess what in the wilderness it ain't no roads It ain't nothing but dirt and trees But God will give you a road to help you get on To get out Woo. He gonna help you get out I feel good tonight He's gonna help you get out Do you hear what I'm saying And not only is he gonna do But he's gonna send a refreshing So that when you come out You ain't gonna be all tired and weak From what you went through That's what the river represents Y'all, y'all catch that right there And at the end of the day Guess what He's still gonna get the glory Verse 21, because here it is, not only is he going to do a new thing, not only are the beasts of the field, verse 20, uh, he said they're going to honor him and the dragons and the owls because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. So he said, look here, everything going to give me honor because I'm God and because I made a way. Because watch this, you ain't the only one suffering. But one thing is for sure that you can shout off is that God's going to take care of his people. Because he said it at the end of verse 20. He said to give drink to my people, my chosen. Come this way. Come closer. You got to get to that place where you understand and you know that God is more than able and willing to give you that what you need. He's able to do it. He's going to do it. But he's going to make everything bow and get in submission of him. Do you understand what I'm saying? God's going to do that. He's going to get doing it. Hear me. Folk don't believe now, but they're going to believe. Ain't nobody talking to me in here. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Folk that don't trust in God now, I bet you they're trusting him now because they don't know what else to do and know where to turn. And the thing, the crazy part about it is they see that the saints of God are going through it and they're trying to figure out how in the world are they surviving. Because we know. That we are his chosen people and he's going to take care of us. Amen. And you got to understand that not only is he wanting to do a new thing for us, not only is he wanting to get the glory out of us. But look, in verse 21, he says, this, uh, this people have I formed for myself and they shall show forth my praise. Can I submit to you, brothers and sisters, that whatever your this is and whatever you're dealing with and going through, God is building us. He's building his people. He's strengthening us through this. He's building you. He's shaping you. He's molding you. He's making you better. He's giving you some spiritual muscles. He's getting you to that place to where you can stand and stand flat footed. Because see, there was a time, let's be real, that where we doubted God and we were waver. But now that we get to that place where we're going, we're standing tall now. I'm sitting in the chair. If I stand up, y'all ain't going to see me. So what happened? He said, I'm sitting. He, you going to sit tall. You know why? Because God is building you and he's strengthening you to be able to handle this. Hear me and hear me well. Baby, this ain't the first time you've been in a dark place. This ain't going to be the last time you've been in a dark place uh, that you've been in. But you can handle dark places better when you know that God is strengthening you and preparing you for something greater. Hear me. The fact that you didn't die in the dark place. The fact that you didn't die in that place says that God is building you and shaping you and molding you. You hear what I'm saying? Because it is in this moment. Watch this. In this moment, God is building and shaping you, but he's also using you to be the example. Because guess what? In this moment, the unbelievers that wasn't believing, they now have to call on the name of the Lord because they don't know what's going to happen next. Hmm? I was scrolling through Facebook and I got a friend that's a Muslim. And man, look at here. He was calling on Jesus and he put Jesus, the son of God. And I was like, look, well, well, there it go. Because guess what? In this moment, everybody realizing that he's the only help. He's the only one that can get us through. Y'all hear me tonight. His name is the strong tower where the righteous can run in and be saved. 
His name, demons trouble at his name. Sickness and disease have to bow at his name. That's what he's saying. Look here. Everything in the earth going to give me glory after this. After this, yeah. And guess what? And anybody that stopped giving him the glory, guess what? Something wrong with them. Huh? Let me move on. You got to understand, brothers and sisters, that when you come through this, you got to show forth his praise, not your praise. But he says that, that my people shall show forth my praise. You got to make sure at the end of the day that when it's all said and done, that he gets the glory. Why does he get the glory? Because he's refined us. He's revived us. He's replenished us in the desert. He's helped us through the wilderness. And we got to make sure that everybody know that we serve a mighty God. We got to let everybody know that he's bringing us out of a dark place into a new place, into a place of light. You got to let folk know we serve a mighty God. You got to make the declaration known. You got to ring your voices high. Hey, listen, hear me tonight. This ain't the time to get quiet. This is the time for you to get to that place uh, where you go on. Uh, that thing want to work now anyway. But you got to get to that place where you ring loud and let the people know. Hear me tonight. I know you're trying to figure out how can we sing a song in a strange land. Take your harp off the willow tree. Get back in the place and open up your mouth and begin to give God what's due him. Because guess what? At the end of the day, he gets the glory. Yes, ma'am. He will do it. He will do it. Check this out. You got to get to that place where you make sure that God always get the glory out of everything that happens. Every time he wakes you up, God, you get the glory. When you make a way, God, you get the glory. When you provide, you get the glory. When you heal, you get the glory. When you get saved, when folk get saved, you get the glory. When deliverance take place, God, you get the glory. Huh? huh Y'all ain't hear what I said. When we come out of COVID-19, God, you get the glory. You get the honor and the praise. Even while I'm in it. You still get the glory and we got to show forth of who he is and hear me tonight, brothers and sisters. You got to get to that place where you can become that trumpet in the earth, that drum in the earth, that organ in the earth, that violin in the earth, whatever instrument you want to name. Because I can't go through all them names, but you got to become that in the earth and you got to make some noise to let the world know I trust and I believe God and God's going to do this. And guess what? While I'm waiting, he gets the glory when it's over. He gets gets the glory. And if I have to go through it again, he gets the glory. Ain't nobody saying that. I need y'all to catch that. You got to make sure he gets the glory. That's why you can understand what, what he said in the Bible. He said that this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and what? Be glad in it. Listen, you got to rejoice and be glad. Every day is a day that the Lord has made. I know things don't look right. I know things don't feel right. I know everything around you ain't right, but you got to rejoice and be glad in it. Even if you don't feel good, you can grandma never say if you can't say a word, you ought to wave your hand. Show forth the glory of God and show forth the power of God and let God know. I trust you and I believe. I know what you're capable of. You get the glory. They walk in and give you bad news. Thank you. Why? Because God's going to get the glory out of this. Woo! Hallelujah. God's going to get the glory out of it. I can rejoice in bad news because God's going to get the glory. He's going to bring me through. That's what my faith is. And watch this. Even if he don't bring me through, my faith still is there. I know and believe that God is more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's more than able to do what I need him to do. And my brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. And I'm going to end this tonight because um, I, 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 feel, I feel like we need to pray. And we're going to pray. But, but understand this. We got to keep our minds and our hearts open to what God is doing. And what he wants to do in our midst. Y'all hear me? Don't get distracted now. God wants to do something. Keep your mind. Keep your eyes. Keep your ears. Keep your heart and your soul focused. God wants to do something in the midst. Watch this. Even in the wilderness. Where he will make a way. Watch this. It seems impossible. But it's possible. God's going to do it. But you got to keep your mind and you got to keep your focus on him. No distractions in this in this moment, because you got to remember what he said. He said in his word, he's going to do a new thing, which means he's going to do it while you're in there. Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes you got to go through the worst thing in order to get the new thing. Hmm. Sometimes what you go through is the fertilizer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know how they tell you to put manure in the garden and stuff grow. It helps is something in the manure. That helps it grow. That helps things in the garden grow. But there's something in what you're going through that's going to help you grow. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
I'll say it again. There's something in what you're going through that's going to help you grow. Can I submit to you, brothers and sisters? Keep your mind on him. And he will do a new thing in your heart. He will do a new thing in your home. He will do a new thing on your job. He'll do a new thing in your marriage. He'll do a new thing in your community. He'll do a new thing in your uh, church. He'll do a new thing in this country. He'll do a new thing in the state that you're in. Understand, brothers and sisters, you got to allow God to redefine who you are and put you in a place of purpose and positioning that you may show forth his praise. And that, yeah, that's good, Jackie Brown, that that. Stinky stuff help you grow. That's good. Now understand that he wants to do a new thing, but guess what? He can't do it till you get over of living that dark life in that past. Hear me, brothers and sisters. After this comes something new and fresh. Your ideas ought to be new and fresh. The way you perceive things ought to be new and fresh. I believe ushers, when you when you come back to ushering in whatever church you're in, because I know it's more than Golden View on here, you ought to come back with a renewed and refreshed attitude and wanting to do things in a better way with a more spirit of excellence than what you've done. Deacons and deaconess, you ought to come back with a refreshed mind to serve. Preachers, you ought to go back, whether you're a pastor or a associate minister, you ought to go back with a renewed mind, with a new perspective and a new outlook on what God wants to do. Hear me, you ought not be praying the same prayers that you was praying before when you come through this. Choirs ought not be singing the same songs that they've been singing week after week. They, they ought not keep singing them same songs. They ought, they ought to be a new sound in them and a new, wor- a, a new worship and a new praise in them. And the folk that come in church and sit down with their arms folded, guess what? There ought to be something new about you. Even if you don't get up and run, jump, skip, hop and put a two-step in your feet, you ought to be able to lift your hands because some folk ain't done that in a while. There ought to be something new about you. There ought to be an amen, thank you, Jesus, glory, hallelujah, in your belly. Hear me? God want to do a new thing. He want to do something in you that ain't never been done. But he can't do it if we don't allow him to. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. You ought to be in a new place. And even though we're in this dark moment, I believe, I can't speak for nobody else, I believe God has shifted me and still shifting me to a new place. Huh? Y'all think I'm crazy now. Wait till God get through shifting and doing the new thing that he wants to do. Because I hear God. I believe God. I trust God. I've seen him do too much. Hear me tonight. Don't go through all that you're going through. And don't go through all of COVID-19. And God spare us to make it through COVID-19. And not give him the glory. That's what he said. He says, and at the end of it, he says, my people will give me glory. Y'all, that's what he created us to do. He created us to give him praise. He created us to be his mouthpiece. He created us to make sure that he gets the glory, that he gets the honor. He created us for that, y'all. That's Really, he created us to love on him so he can love back on us. That's why he created us. So to answer your question, what after this? A lot after this. Growth after this. Hmm. Hallelujah. Peace after this. Joy after this. Whatever it is that you're seeking and that you need and that you meet, it's coming after this. I'm going to do a new thing is what God says. After this, after this, you're going to be better after this. You got to grow after this. Hear me? And some of y'all that are sitting down on gifts and anointings, get up. Because guess what? After this, it's time to move. And even in this moment, I said this yesterday. Um, I think it might have been in one of my Facebook lives that I've been encouraging the people. Is that take this moment and allow God to wake up the visions and the creative ability in you. Some of y'all don't like your nine to five anyway. <laughs> you can't stand it. But let God awaken in you what's there and trust him to do it and to sustain you. Y'all worried about everything going on? Hear me. God got this. God working on this, but you got to trust him and you got to go through and give him the glory while you're going through it. Don't get distracted. Don't get sidetracked because after this, there's a major shift. The shift has already begun. But after this, when we come through this, there's going to be a great shifting. It's going to be a great shifting. The Bible said that when Jesus died on the cross, the earth shook. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, we in Holy Week. The earth shook. Y'all hear me? And then the earth shook again on Sunday when he got up. Hear me tonight. God want to shake the foundation. Okay, I got to quit. God want to shake the foundation. He want to shift you from where you are to where you need to be. All right, we're going to pray. That's what we're doing. Wherever you are, just pause for a moment and let's talk to the Father. Father, we give you praise tonight. We give you glory and honor for just being who you are. We thank you for this word tonight and the reassurance that there's something new that you want to do in us. We thank you tonight, oh God, for not only revealing to us that you want to do a new thing, God, but we thank you that it's going to spring forth. It's going to come up, God. Some things that we didn't even know that were there that you want to do in us and through us and for us. We thank you that it's going to spring forth, God. We thank you that you're going to make a way in the wilderness. You're going to make a way in the desert. You're going to send a refreshing. You're going to send a revival. But God, we got to be honest with you tonight that as we're thanking you for this, God, we got to pause and we got to ask for your forgiveness, oh God. Because, God, we've sinned along this way. God, we allowed our faith to waver. We've allowed our trust to waver. God, our relationship has even wavered. But, Father, we pray tonight that you will forgive us, God, and that you will cleanse us and free us, God, from that place of sin and that place of bondage that we may be able to hear you and walk in the shift and walk in the place that you would have us to be. We thank you that every mind battle and every shackle and every chain that the enemy has released over us and has spoken in the atmosphere concerning us, that those things be counseled and destroyed now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you even now that in this moment, oh God, that you refresh us, God, that while we're going through this, God, we thank you that you're not going to bring us out and then refresh us, God, but you're going to keep us refreshed when we come up. But God, refresh us, revive us, replenish us, God, reset us, resuscitate us, God. Some of our faith have died. Some of our zeal and passion for you have died. Our worship and our praise have died. But we pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will breathe and that you will pump life back into us, God. Give us that very thing that we need to keep on moving and ticking in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you even now, God, that we're going to stop focusing on what happened in our past, God. We're going to stop worrying about and focusing on the past hurt and the past pain, the past pain, God. And we thank you that we're going to begin to release these things. We're going to begin to release the hurt, the bitterness, the anger, and the disappointment so that we can receive the new thing, God. We thank you that even now, God, that you would detox us, God. Get out of us everything that's holding us back, oh God. Get out of us, God, everything, God, that is not only holding us back, God, but that's hindering us from being everything that you would have us to be. We we pray in Jesus name, God, that you are cleanse us, God, created us a clean heart of renewing us a right spirit. Oh, God, God, wash our hands, God, wash our lips and our ears, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that we may be everything that you would have us to be. Father, we commit ourselves to your way. We commit ourselves to your will right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we get under the shadow of the almighty and God, as we get there, we shall abide there. We shall stay there, oh God, because that's the place of security and the place of safety, God. So, God, as we get in your will, God, we thank you that you will help us to stay in that place, God. Help us to stay in your will, God. Help us to stay where our protection and our help lies, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you even now, God, that everything that flashes by us that looks good and sounds good, that we're not going to run into that, God, but we're going to stay rooted and grounded in you. We thank you for being the keeper and the lover of our souls. We thank you for giving us renewed faith and giving us, God, renewed mercies every morning, oh God, and renewed grace. We thank you, oh God, that you ain't took your hand off of us, God. We thank you that you see something in us that nobody else sees in us, God. We thank you tonight, oh God, that there's great purpose for us, God. We thank you for the destiny that lies ahead. We thank you for the place of positioning. We thank you, hallelujah, for the anointing that rests upon our lives. And we thank you that in the season and in this moment of our lives that you are cultivating and shifting and making the anointing stronger and evident on our lives, God. Hallelujah. We give you praise tonight, oh God, that we're going to be better. We're going to be be mature. We're going to be stronger. We're going to be wiser when we come through this. We thank you. Hallelujah. God, for the indwelling fire and the spirit of the Holy Ghost on the inside. God, we thank you that when we pray and when we open up our mouths, that we will tear down Satan's kingdom because of that, what you're stirring up on the inside of us. God, we pray that you will wake up the worshiper, wake up the praiser, wake up the intercessor on the inside of do a new thing in us now. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that when our family sees us, glory to God, they won't see us for the old person, but they will see us for the new person that you would have us to be. Father, we pray now in Jesus' name for the person that is watching or that will watch, God, that is going through that in the wilderness now, God. But God, remind them and give them the reassurance that you gave us tonight, that you will make a way in the wilderness, God. Remind them and give them the reassurance, God, that peace and a refreshing is coming into whatever area they, that you need them to be in, oh God. God, we thank you for this moment in time. God, it hurt us for you to shut down everything around us. It hurt us, God, for you to take our jobs. It hurt us for you to take away the corporate worship setting, but we thank you, hallelujah, glory to God, that is for our good. We thank you that we will be better because of it. We thank you that our appreciation will be better because of it, God. We thank you, God, that in this moment, God, you're going to teach us, you're going to show us how to love you the proper way. Hallelujah. We give you the praise even now, God. We give you glory, God, because we know that this too shall pass. We know that this is not the end, but God, glory to God, our declaration tonight, glory, is that we shall make it. We shall overcome this, God. We shall get through this, God, because the hand of God is upon our lives. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight, God. We give you the praise, God, and we promise you, God, that when you bring us through glory to God, hallelujah, that when you do it, that we will not turn back, Father, but we will press forward in your will. And God, tonight we cry out from the depths of our soul that we will say yes to your will. We will say yes to your way. Whatever you want to do, how you want to do it, we submit ourselves to you now, God, that your perfect and submissive will be done in our lives, oh God. Not our will, but your will be done tonight, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we commit ourselves and we commit our ways and we commit our lives unto your hand and to your power. Because, God, we know tonight that when we commit ourselves to you, that we cannot lose because your word tells us that because you are the greatest power, we cannot. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we cannot and we will not be defeated. So we thank you for victory in this. We thank you for victory when we come out. Out of this glory to God. We thank you for victory now, God, in every area of our lives. God, you know our heart's desire. You know the silent prayers. Huh? You know the spoken prayer. But we declare victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whew. Hey, glory to God. We declare victory in Jesus' name. Satan will not win. He cannot win. But we declare it. And it is so. We declare it. It is so. Your faith be renewed. Glory to God. Your trust in God be renewed. Your relationship in, with God be strengthened in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray that every need in your life, glory to God, whatever it is, great or small, that God meets it in every area with nothing lacking. Ooh, glory to God. I believe it tonight, and I touch and agree with you, my brother, my sister, that the will of the Lord will be done in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for this moment and this time of study and this time of prayer. And we thank you whew, that victory is ours, not tomorrow, but victory is ours today. We don't have to wait till tomorrow. We thank you for giving it to us. Now, may the grace of God, hallelujah. The sweet communion of your precious Holy Spirit. May it rest ruling about us all now, hence, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all go be blessed in the love of the Lord. Tune in Friday night, hallelujah, at 6 o'clock. I'm coming on. Uh, we're going to have a special worship experience. I'm going live. Uh, we're going we're gonna to preach and teach the word on Friday night. Um, I don't know, y'all. I don't know what God is doing in this season, but he's up to something. And guess what? And the good thing about it is I'm glad that Friday's coming. But guess what? When Friday's over, Sunday's coming. And on Sunday, the Bible says he got up with all power. And so we're going to celebrate Friday and we're going to celebrate Sunday. Y'all uh, tune in. On Friday night at 6 o'clock, we're coming to lift up the name of Jesus. Listen, I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I got to get off here because I got to go. But not just only that I got to go, but I just, I really feel God's power. And I feel, really feel God's glory. And so I want you guys to be encouraged. I want you guys to be strengthened. 
And I want you to go and walk in the place that God would have you to be. Bye. Love y'all. Talk to y'all later. God bless you.